It is the Two Guys Garage Podcast. He is Kevin Bird. I am Willie B and fired up, bro. This is my wheelhouse today. On this podcast, we're talking racing, baby. Yeah. Um, Kevin, I, I, I got to tell you, when it comes to racing, man, nothing is badder, nothing is cooler, nothing is just more impressive than seeing some of the baddest, the raddest, and the sickest, fastest cars in the world come competing. My own hometown, in my own backyard. I was fortunate enough, uh, I reached out to a friend of mine, Alexis DeJorna, DeJoria, and, and she's came on my radio show several times before. Um, she's always out there fighting that fight, man, that that is, you know, top fuel, baby, funny car status. And uh, this year, man, I'm anxious to talk to you. It's been a wild ride. Uh, it, it's got to be so cool knowing you're getting in. Think about this, Kevin. You get in the car. We oftentimes talk about, you know, horsepower and, and try to find it. These these people are banging on horsepower is unlimited number. It's just tracks and clutches. They found uh, all of it. Yeah, man. It's, they found every horsepower it, you could possibly get. They found and they put it in there. It's, it's insane. <laughs> It's unreal to watch these teams and these these people do what they do, man. For, for somebody that's never been, like these guys, girls, uh, when they come down, it's such a team effort, right? You got the crew chief, you got the drivers, you got the crew uh, that really just tears all of these engines apart. And they do so in a way where they've all got their strategic job and or, you know, things that they're responsible for. But, man, they're on this thing like white on rice, bro. They're tearing the whole, pulling the heads off, long buck part, uh, checking out the pistons, rings, uh, seeing what's what's holding up and what's not. Uh, and I'm sure if you were, well, we could ask Alexis, uh, Alexis, that's got to be one of the wildest things when you first, you know, showed up to do this crazy racing thing. Um, you do your job, and that in itself is is something crazy. But watching all the other supporting cast and what they do had to be pretty wild for you, huh? Uh, definitely. Seeing those guys tear the motors down within a matter of 30 minutes if we need, especially on race day, was really incredible. I've never seen that done except NASCAR, which is much more of a, a, of a limited uh, deal that you can do to the cars. Yeah. But, I mean, after every single run we make, you come back and they strip the car down to or strip the motor down to the bare block rebuild the heads, take the clutch out, resurface it, put it back in. I mean, refuel, we got to do it all. And uh, and we've done it in a matter of 30 minutes on race day, which is really phenomenal. Yeah, man. It, it's so wild to see you guys hurry up to the pit. Something goes wrong. Just blow everything <laughs> apart. Everybody's got their, you know, their assigned job gig. Everybody's working on data, research, doing their engine tearing apart, you know, thing. But as a, as a person looking from the outside in, it's it's so oddly choreographed. It's like controlled chaos. But wow, is it cool to get this job done and watch you guys fire it off, make the hit, and everything comes out okay. Yeah, and that's what, what's great about every ticket is a pit pass in NHRA, and those fans can come back and watch the guys tear the motor down and meet the the crew and the crew chiefs and the drivers. So it kind of sets us apart from any other motorsport. It it truly does. I was going to say, I think, I think that's what makes NHRA is it's like two different events are happening. There's on the track and, you know, that's mind blowing, you know, for anybody who's never been seeing nitromethane <laughs> uh, burning like that with thousands and thousands and thousands of horsepower, like it makes your eyeballs wiggle in your head. You can't uh, even see awesome. straight, like it's an ungodly experience. And then you go to take a break and you walk behind the stands and there's a whole other thing. Like you said, it's controlled chaos and the whole breakdown, the coordinated events and how it all comes back together and you're feeling the pressure, but you're seeing the professionalism of everybody kind of attacking it and doing their job mm -hmm. and getting you out on that line uh, for the next run. Uh, I think it's just as kind of powerful and entertaining and, and uh, super cool. Yeah, the, you know, the drama, other aspect of it. the drama of it all. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing to sit in the stands, watch these things, these top fuel cars and funny cars go by you, your eyes, your heart is shaking. You can't control where you're looking because things are vibrating. You're like stuck in a paint shaker. And it's like, it's unbelievable, <laughs> man. It puts giggles and smiles on you for hours at a time. You walk out of there covered in black. You don't even know what it is, but you're lathered up and sexy in my opinion. Um, now, here's what's really crazy, right, is she lives this on a daily. She does this all the time. It's nothing for her to go 300 miles an hour. That is insane. Uh, Alexis, uh, I don't know what made you want to get into such a wild world, but um, we're thankful you did. Uh, tell us about that. How, how did you know that this was something 
that you wanted to command. You wanted to, to you know, get in that fight and, and do your thing with. Well, it's funny you say fight because I wanted to be a fighter pilot when I was five years old, but that didn't come to fruition. <laughs> so I became a race car driver it's instead. Close. <laughs> but it's the closest thing I could get to to uh, to up there. So, uh, I mean, our G forces like we our, we accelerate quicker than an air than a fighter pilot yeah. does, and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, I've always been the wild child in the family, so it's, it's not really yeah. that off of you know what everybody expected me to, <laughs> to turn out, but. But um, yeah, I mean, I love it. Um, I think it's the coolest motorsport around. I mean, I love other forms of motorsports and and uh, and bikes too, yeah. and motorcycles and everything, but like that. But uh, there's nothing like nitromethane <clears throat> power, you got like that the right. kind of power that you know uh, makes eleven thousand horsepower and flames coming out of the pipes and. So we're really going to miss doing that up at Bandemir and I don't want to get too sad about it, yeah, but I've been man. racing there since I was, since 2012 and it's, uh, it's going to be bittersweet. Uh, we went to the finals there, you know, not too long ago and it's like, man, I, I've never gotten a win there and it, I really, before this track goes away, man, I really hope this weekend we can get a win. Yeah. Such, such big moves for you guys this weekend. So what she's talking about when you're, you know, when you're listening to this podcast, you may not know, uh, the Maha Nationals are coming through Colorado and Colorado presents a unique challenge for so many of these racers and teams because the altitude of the track. Now, a lot of times, and Kevin, you play witness, witness to this before. A lot of times we never talk about altitude because it's something that most people never have to deal with when it comes to their car. You know, you know, there's some places you can go to that may have a little bit of altitude, but we're talking massive altitude differences out here we started a thousand you know uh, say we started a mile high so 5280 feet is where it, it sits at in the city bandamir is outside the city in the foothills it's about six thousand feet regular altitude there corrected which is what you really care about this air density um that's uh that's corrected altitude of 10,000 11,000 feet sometimes when these people are putting down power so that presents an ugly challenge and unfortunate for us, you know, Bandemir has been here. She said she's been racing at Bandemir since 2012 or something. Uh, I've been going there for about 30 years. That track is going away this year. It's the final year you guys are coming through. Does that put more stress and weight on you, knowing what that means? And, you know, you're coming to a track that Dodge is sponsoring. I know you want that, you know, you want to stick it to all the Dodge drivers. Um, <laughs> you know, you've been in the finals here. What would that mean for you? you know, out here at this facility? Um, it would be huge. When we did go to the finals, uh, we got beat by Matt Hagen, who obviously is a Dodge uh, driver. Yeah, yeah. So he was really happy. He's like, man, he goes, I've always wanted to win this and I've never won it for Dodge. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> I needed this. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, obviously it was your time. Well, so. Hey, you're going against Matt this weekend. It is weekend. what it is. Uh, I mean, everybody. Yeah. But um, this is a, it was a tough track because we have a setup that – that we only have for this racetrack because it's a mile above sea level. Like you said, we don't have the downforce that we usually have. Um, the oxygen's a little less than the air. So you get down to the end of the track and, and at least for us, like we're out of breath, you know, even if though it's a three second run, like the first time I went out there and didn't get acclimated to the elevation prior, I was so winded at the top end. I thought I was going to die. I was like, <gasps> You know, like, where's the oxygen tank? Right. Like, now I get why, like, people like Force and, you know, some of the OG drivers have those oxygen tanks in their cars and they're, like, sucking up all the oxygen before they get in. And it totally makes sense. But um, I've started over the years, you know, I started going to Red Rocks and uh, hiking up there and, you know, getting used to it, getting a little bit higher than the racetrack yeah. uh, every morning before the races. So that really helped. And it just kind of gets you in that right uh, frame of mind you know, to, to do well. So, I mean, it is the only track where we have cer a certain setup for, um, so we are going to miss that. I mean, some teams, you know, won't mind that at all because right, right. <laughs> they're like, you have a certain setup that works all, all year and then you have to change that and then take the, the Denver setup and <laughs> off the shelf and put that in <laughs> and then you put it away for another year and then uh, it's going to be sad that 
we don't need to we don't get to dust that off you know it, once a year is but it challenging god bless to all the people that are going to be racing there this weekend and uh we're definitely going to miss it is it challenging but is it also kind of fun to, to change it up like that to have that different setup and just the you know everything that goes with it the, the challenges of it and you name it or yeah i i think it's uh you know it's it's exciting for the crew chiefs, um, you know, because they get to see like, all right, you know, at, at a at a uh, um, a disadvantage, so to speak. How fast can we get these cars to go? Right, you know? right. Um, and, and they're so, only going a thousand so feet that's here. Cool. They're not going the full yeah. thirteen twenty. They're only going a thousand feet. No, uh, not anymore. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. You know, um, it's it's wild to think that they're, they're doing speeds three hundred plus miles an hour. Uh, and they're only ripping that thing for a thousand feet. So you can imagine the G forces. Uh, it's hard to wrap yeah, your head around. Um, but you know, as a driver, you do this on the regular. Um, is this season? Uh, are, is this season uh, a tougher season for you? I know you've been close a couple times. I know Blake Alexander got by you uh, last week. Yeah. And I know he beat Matt Hagen too. So you know Blake has to. Have a, I mean, I feel a little bit better about that, <laughs> thinking like, well, he did win the whole race, right? Yeah. So it wasn't just me, but I beat myself on that round, and you know we should have won that, and that kicks me in the ass. But that was then. Yeah. And this is now. It's a new race. Yeah. So. Yeah, and obviously. This ramps up towards the big Western swing, which is, you know, important for you guys moving forward. Yeah. Uh, tell everybody a little bit how, how the NHRA sort of does its point system, how it, you know, uh, certain certain drivers and teams get to move forward. Uh, can you kind of run what that's all about down for us? So basically, if you're in the top 10, uh, I think it's after uh, Indy, Indy's like one and a half or yeah. One and a half points, so you get extra points, and right, then right. also all the points that you uh, that you gather up for the uh, Mission Foods challenges that we've been a part of too this year. Okay, uh, all those pound, uh, all those points uh, add up, and then we use them at the end of the year as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, but if you're in the top ten, then you are part of the chase, and luckily we've been part of the chase. I think since yeah. day you since know day one, one but, yeah. Uh, we've been, uh, it, it's been rough. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of ups and downs, but this year has been our best start to a season yet. And awesome. I mean, we've, we worked so hard last year. Last year was really tough. And I just kept telling the guys, like, just have faith. Like we're working towards next year. Now, next year is really going to be our, our, our break. Now, was it last year or the year before that, that you had the big crash, I believe in, it was it Houston? Um, uh, I can't remember. I had it, well, I slapped the wall in Houston last year, but I also uh, I had well, I had a blow up in St. Louis a few years back, and then I had a really about. bad fire in Dallas the, a few years back as well. That was the same year, actually. That was two races in a row. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I was like, wow, okay. Well, the first time we learned a lot about having the backup car ready to go. Because we didn't really have it ready to go, but a bunch of teams jumped in and helped us out. And I mean, I was ready for the next round because both rounds we had won. At yeah, both races, yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, it's like, and then crazy, my car right? blew up, and then another time my, my car caught on fire. So by the second time, we were ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I was ready too. I was like, okay, I guess this is how we're going to run things this <laughs> year. Well, it sounds like you just kind of. What else do you have to teach me? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you just kind of run through those events and just blow out the other side and just keep on going. Does it ever give you pause? Yeah. Does it ever give you pause and um, make you kind of gut check a little bit? Or you just, man, you just get I on mean, that it horse. Has to. Yeah. No, because there's, you know, you're, you have the highest highs with this kind of racing and the lowest lows. I yeah. mean, you're out there and you're going over 300 miles an hour on a consistent basis, day to day. And then you come home after the race and it's like, ugh, like all your endorphins, like everything. It's just like, it's such a downer, you know, because you're going from up here to literally you're going full speed to back to zero right, right. again. Um, so mentally, emotionally, it's very draining and it's kind of like, yeah, that's the time where you get to think about all the great stuff that happened and all the shit that you did that you shouldn't have done. You know, like, yeah. it's like the, all of that. So um, yeah, we definitely have a lot of time to go through it and, uh, you know, just, just try to learn from it, all the things and, um, and get better. So what's the right, process so like after an event? 
you know, however you did, good or bad, do you start breaking down each step and every little thing, whether it's the setup on the car, whether it's, you know, what you did on the track? Like, is there kind of a whole breakdown and you just, you know, whether it's mental notes, you're writing it down and you're kind of using that to leverage and advance to the next event and the next happening? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and each track, you know, has, has interesting, like little tweaks about the, the race surface itself. So you're going to run into some, some different issues that you have to overcome during the weekend. But for the most part, I mean, you're going straight and, you know, if the car is set up really good, you know, chances are you're going to be set up good at the next track. And, yeah. um, we've had some weird weather lately. <laughs> we've had a lot of rain and, and uh and all that but uh overall we've done really well and we've stayed in the top four yeah, you know, yeah. throughout throughout the yeah, season so it's been it's been great uh, i want to know your routine not many people we talk to can give us their play-by-play -play of what it's like to get in a car strap in do a burnout all right get back into the you know your stripes again <laughs> and launch a car that's 11,000 horsepower, run 300 miles an hour, all in three seconds. Think about that, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. This woman has literally gone 300 miles an hour within that time frame. So oh, <laughs> it's gotta be maddening from the first moment you did this to, to now, and I'm sure you've, mm -hmm. you came up with this routine. When I, when I do my car, uh, I strap in my car, I, you know, roll up the window, shut the door. And for just a few, a few seconds, yeah. I go over everything uh, I need to do. And for me, it's, you know, turning off the, the fans or making sure the temps are right or bottle press is right, things like that. It's got to be so wild in your car. Um, when you're strapped in and you see them lower that body down, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? What? Can you walk us through a little play-by-play? -play? Um, everything gets really quiet, and it's almost like she, slow motion. She says "quiet" it's in a really, car that you can't, yeah. you can't hear, you can't carry a conversation <laughs> on within a hundred feet of. She she says it gets quiet. So all right, so they lower the hood <laughs> it and it gets quiet, and there's four hundred decibels banging your head. But yet, for her, it's quiet. That's concentration, yeah. you guys. That's focus. <laughs> Uh, I know it's weird, right? It, it's like it's game on. I can tell you when I've had some some bad accidents in the past, that really separates you from like you know the people that are should be yeah. here, and <laughs> you know what I mean, and then and don't have any business being in that seat. But um, everything really slows down. Like your brain, it's really incredible. Everything slows down when you're that huh? hyper focused and in, in your seat. Yeah, everything. Is kind so of like light. slow motion, and it's game on. Once you put, once my helmet's on and I'm suited up and in that seat, it's game on, and I, I'm out for blood. So and no what goes through? Blood. What goes? What are your steps? You, you're, you're obviously in a burnout box. You'll go through that. You'll, you'll, you know, do your thing for your burnout. Kind of walk us through uh, what you're doing and what's going on in the car at the same time. All right. Uh, so they start up the the car. I put it on the high side, the fuel on the high side, um, and then they lower the body. I wait for Nikki to give me the sign to do my burnout, line up right on right to him. And uh then I take my foot off the clutch and he hits the, he tell goes past me and he he puts his arm down like this to do a, you know, do my burnout. Do my burnout, put it in reverse. Uh one of my crew guys comes over and he he pulls out the uh pulls up the Right, right, the you get a little air in there. Yeah. It's like an emergency roof hatch. Yeah. I back up, line up, however the guys want me to line up. So where I do my burnout isn't necessarily where they want me to line okay. up the car. Um, sometimes they'll see bald spots on the starting line and they don't want me to be right in those, yeah. in, in those spots. Or they'll see the car ahead of us went out and uh, smoked the tires. So they like, okay, maybe we don't want to start from that position. So it, it varies. Um, so I have to back up right yeah. where they want and, and me. And you, you should say these guys these guys are measuring how thick and how soft the rubber is. They're out there with crazy NASA tools out there getting yeah. measurements on the rubber, right. how gooey and sticky. Yeah, the man, grip. it's crazy what yeah. these guys are doing. All that. So she's following their lead <laughs> up until this yeah. point. Well, let me ask you though, real quick. So if they have a, a path for you to do your run, why wouldn't you do your yes. burnout on that same path? 
Um, because they don't want to disrupt the, however, they don't want to disrupt the line, the, blue, the adhesion the, material. The, the yeah. Lines, hey, that, Kevin, yeah. It, it's wild it's when these different. guys lay down this stripe, when they back up, there's a, a wild little thing that happens on the track, especially when you see it in the sun. Um, you can see these perfectly, you know, just two parallel lines sitting there side by side. They're just like a, it's an all you can eat buffet of them chicken tenders you just love and man they're just lined up in a row and you just want to mow down like a corn on the cob but the chicken tenders uh, as long as you get them right there man that in that stripe in that lane uh that's where you need to be it's it's wild how just a little bit outside that yeah. that area it gets it gets really slick really marbly uh and these guys are yeah. in the clutch packs you know 60 foot 100 foot 300 foot out so you're you you got your line uh, what's the temperature of the car? Um, what's going on inside? Are there gauges you're looking at? Oh, or are you not focused on that at all? <laughs> There's no gauges. I'm not looking at any for, gauges. For in me, my a street car, car you know, in an eight, eight, nine second. There's no gauges. There's no fans. <laughs> there's, so cool. <laughs> there's no air conditioning. There's, there's fresh air in my helmet. That's about it. <laughs> I do have a radio, but I'd say half the time it doesn't work. <laughs> I sing to myself. You know. All right, so you know, for yeah, for us, I'm like, all right, make sure your bottles there. You're looking at your your temperatures, make sure everything's right. But you, it's just all right. Get your mind right because the most important thing for you as a driver is to beat that other person off the line. Yes. So they, after I do my my burnout and I back up, uh, they tell me to stop. I put it back in forward, and they lift the body up. They reset all the timers, the fuel timers and everything like that. Um, you know, I'm watching the guy who's holding the body up and he's just like looking at me and he's looking at them and looking at me and he's the last guy I see when they <laughs> he lowers the body. Went up, go up to pull, uh, pull up to Nikki, my crew chief, one of my crew chiefs, and he gets me set, you know, before the pre-stage bulb. He gets me kind of close to it because yeah. I don't want to keep yeah. searching, searching. And, you know, I like to be a little bit closer. Uh, gets me right there and he smacks the hood and it's it's time to go. So I line up, you know, go up to pre-stage, take a breath, wait for the other guy, or maybe he's already in, but I, I don't let that mess do, up. Do you ever I play do. the pre-stage you know, stage my, game? Do you my ever, repetition. You just go in. I don't do you that. just do your thing. I don't do that kind of stuff. I just said, uh, one thing I won't do is like, I won't get well, hung okay. out. Like, I'm not going to just try to hurry up and get in there. And then pull it on the high side and be waiting, you know, and, and that I, has happened to me before. And I know, you know, I try not to do that. There's certain people that you just know take a little bit more okay. time than other people. Um, but I, I just try not to, to, to pay attention to that. Um, but definitely you don't want to get hung out. Um, so like I said, a pre-stage, the other guy's pre-stage. Take a breath. All right. Pull it on the high side. Stage the car with the brake. Wait for the bulbs. Smack the bottom. Damn. Ooh, that gave you goosebumps, man. <laughs> so, you know, it's wild because you make that seem, you, you know, you make it seem like something, uh, it's, it's weird to say, but you do it every day. It's just, you go boom, boom, boom. You're like a little machine. You do this, do this, do this, and this, then boom. Yeah. And then you just hit, and hit it. So, for us, man, it's, it's just cool to hear you kind of walk through that. And as you're walking through it, you can see you actually visualizing your steps and, and what you're going to be doing. And uh, for most champions, they'll tell you, you need that moment. You need that focus and clarification um, to make the right hit because thousands of a second, uh, a second means everything yes. in, in this particular matchup, uh, as well as the tune that your crew chief has selected. So it's a combination of you got to do your job because you feel like those guys have done theirs. Definitely. It's a, it's a lot yeah, of pressure <laughs> on the, on the crew chief, on the team and myself. I mean, they give me this car and then it's up to me to get it down to the right, to the finish line as quick as possible. Uh, I got to leave the starting line as quick as possible and I got to get it down there as straight and, uh, as quick as possible. So sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to and you gotta, yeah. you know, you gotta pedal it that's, and, that's what I was and fight it all the way down yeah. like a buck and bronco, but any I, way you can on race day, if it's on fire, it's, if it's on fire, you don't lift. If it's sideways, you gotta straighten it out and get back on it. I mean, it's, it's never over until that car is turned off, off the top end and it's off and you're up, 
Well, I was gonna say you you make that that you make that whole like staging sound fairly formatic, fairly straightforward. I want to know once you hit that the pedal, you know what's it like that three and a half four seconds uh, down the track? As you said, you're 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 wrestling, you're doing whatever. Like, what's a typical run, and then what's everything on either side of a typical run? Oh gosh, the really nice runs where you go fast and everything goes right and the car is nice and smooth it's like glass i mean it just has enough slip where it's just nice and smooth down the track and then you have other runs that feel faster than they are because they're all over the place and you know that smokes the tires about 500 feet and you know you're already going like over 200 miles an hour and then you got to let the car settle down and make sure you're straight and then gun it again and it's like another launch off the starting line. So it's really intense and really like violent. And uh, I've, I've won some and I've lost Dang. some that way. <laughs> but, you know, you just keep going. You just learn from everyone. But it's not like you can practice for that. What we can do is we can practice our reaction times. But you can't practice, you know, driving down the racetrack. You just got to get it. It is wild, man. Room. Once you see it from cameras that are in the in your all's vehicles and watch how you guys counter steer a car reacting to a violent launch or a little wheel chatter or you know starting to slip a little bit it's it's wild to see what they're doing preemptively as the car maneuvers uh and and fights its way down the, the course and the track uh these drivers man they're doing all of this inside three seconds but for them it feels like a much longer you know session of time because there, there really is a reaction to the action that occurs every single race for these drivers. It, it's wild yeah. to watch them, um, you know, fight that fight. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Mm. I mean, even outside of the car, I'm still a fan, and I love to watch the cars go down. <laughs> yeah, there. man. Uh, so what's the kind of racing that you've not experienced yet, but you, you hope to one day? Oh, uh nascar really you know i've never driven a stock car mm -hmm. i've driven uh dirt midgets i've done uh like pro light up in crandon uh some off-road stuff like that but i mean that's that's pretty much it i've never done an oval track so possibly one day we'll see. <laughs> oh, i was yeah. gonna say willie and i have been in a i've crashed one of those car before <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, Alexis, um, how do people sort of tune into what you're doing, follow you guys socially? I know you got a busy schedule. Uh, it's always hectic for the weekend, yes. uh, but you know, a lot of people love the podcast and definitely want to check you out racing, whether it's this weekend, next weekend, or, or the following. Uh, give everybody kind of a rundown where to find you, how to cheer you on, how to like you or your stuff socially. Well, the next three races, I could tell you, this weekend we're going to be at mm -hmm. Vandermeer Raceway in Morrison, Colorado. Uh, the following week weekend, we're going to be in uh, Seattle, I believe, and then Sonoma, California. So you can look at our schedule. You can catch up with our team, DC Motorsports, AlexisDejoriaRacing.com is where you go. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. It's just my name, but make sure you get the blue mark next to it. Um, because I have a lot of people that are claiming that they're get me verified, and they're not baby. Me. Get verified. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so be sure you're following the right Alexis. Um, but yeah, it'll give you all the updates and some cool behind the scenes photographs and, there you go, and man. all that. So it, is it wild when you meet people for the first time? And you tell them that you drive a top fuel freaking funny car for a living. Like, <laughs> it's got to be the coolest flex. I usually <laughs> don't bring it up. I don't bring it up because uh, it just kind of stops everybody in their tracks. And I imagine, I imagine most everything. people I know. Kind of, I like to hear what other people do. <laughs> most people <laughs> like, are aware. Uh, but at the same refreshing. time, there's going to be somebody that you, you tell that. And they're just, I met me a girl who drives a funny car today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why is it funny? Yeah. yeah. And then some people are like, what is that? <laughs> why, why do they call it funny car? And I'm like, it's not funny <laughs> no, at all, it's actually. That's, that's, that's really <laughs> odd. Yeah. Uh, well, we wish you the best, man, as always. Fantastic catching Thank up with you. you. Uh, I'll be, be speaking with you again uh, here in just a matter of days. As you bring it to the house, Vandermeer, awesome. man, we wish you all the luck in the world up there on the mountain. Uh, thanks so much for doing our podcast. And Thank go you. Alexis, man. You guys find her, uh, follow her, and definitely cheer on 
at your local tracks when she rolls into your town. These are big, these are big toys, man. Uh, and these uh, these girls in there just killing everybody. It's great to see it, man. All the guys walking home with their tail between their legs, and uh, and all the girls are sitting there with all the wallies. <laughs> uh, it's awesome, man. Keep up the great work, Alexis. Uh, and don't forget about our show, Air of the Weekends, on the Motor Trend Network. Check your local listings. Also available on Motor Trend Plus, which is their streaming format. Make sure you check it out there as well. Uh, make sure you check out our guest, Alexis DeJoria. Uh, DeJoria. You can find her online. Uh, I'm telling you, man, throttle jockey for sure. Uh, and definitely cheer on when you get a chance. Our producer, Scoop, executive producer, Bob Ecker. He is Kevin Bird, and I'm going to be for the Two Guys Garage podcast. Yeah, don't forget to check out our website, too, twoguysgarage.com. Share your thoughts with us on social, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at Two Guys Garage. Two Guys Garage podcast is copyright 2023, Britain Productions Incorporated, all rights reserved. Right on, Alexis. Thanks for your time. Take and, a win. Uh, take a win. Kids up there on the mountain Appreciate this weekend, it. girl. <clears throat> Thanks for being on with us. <laughs> Thank you. Always good talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Hope you guys had fun with Bye. us. We'll catch you on the Thanks next for having me. Two Guys Garage podcast.